Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AutoCAD professional with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to use the Action Recorder. We can find the Action Recorder function by going to our Manage tab in our ribbon, and then we see the Action Recorder panel right here. We have the Record button. This allows us to start our recording, and any actions performed subsequently will be saved to the recording. This not only includes command line options, which function much, much better in the recording, but it also includes most of the functions found in our ribbon. So moving and deleting objects also works well with this. Then we can see that we have options that are grayed out, and we're going to explore those when we actually start the recorder very soon. Then once we have a recording, we have the play button here so that we can essentially play the recording and allow all of its functions to work on our screen. Then we have our settings for the action recorder. And this last function is very interesting. This allows us to manage our action macros. A macro is a combination of individual functions to perform one final function at the end. So we can actually create them and manage them right here. So let's get started and make our first recording. Without further ado, let's initiate the action recorder. So we're going to click on record and you'll see that something special happens to our cursor. Now we can see a red dot on the upper right of our cursor and the action recorder dropdown has appeared. We couldn't click on this dropdown before and I'll tell you guys some tips about this dropdown. If you switch to another tab on your ribbon, this dropdown will hide itself and you can't access it again. This is either intended or a small little bug with the action recorder. But you don't have to worry, all your actions are going to be listed in this dropdown right here. So I've memorized a few commands, so we're just going to use them instead of using the ribbon, which is what I'm accustomed to. So I'm going to type the line function, and we'll just make a nice line. So now the action is already in the list. So now I'm just going to make it, I'm going to turn ortho off and I'll make it right there. And it's literally recording the X and Y and Z, if there are, is Z, coordinates of this line. Right now we're just dealing with X and Y because this is a flat plane. So now I'll press the escape key and there it actually even records the fact that I pressed cancel afterwards. So that's also very important. If I pressed enter, for example, so let's actually do that now with a circle, then it's also going to record that. So we'll make a circle here and then enter to repeat the command and it initiates another circle and we can make one right here, for example. Now, in using these kinds of functions, the action recorder can be a bit rudimentary when doing it like this. So it's not that important to use these kinds of functions. The action recorder actually works very well with the audit and purge commands. And so before we get into them, let's actually learn more about the functions next to our start and stop recording button. So we can insert a message into our action macro. So we're going to click on that. Let's actually see how this works. We're going to type, please review step two, for example, just to give some extra instructions to whoever needs it. So now we'll click okay. And now our message is after the last step. So technically this message is in the wrong spot Let's see if we're able to reorder it. Not exactly, you can't exactly drag these kinds of functions. So whatever order you do things in is very important. So if you have a note that you wanna write for the second step, you want to make sure that you write that note right after the second step. Then we have the insert base point function, which is quite interesting. So let's try that right now. It's asking us to specify a base point. Let's say that we wanna use the corner of this little room right here. So we're just gonna click right there. And there it is, we now have a base point recording. So this base point can become quite useful when the macro is done or when the recording is done. And now we have one final thing that's not quite available right now, pause for user input. So that means that we can actually stop the recorder in the middle and then do some actions that we don't want recorded and then we can press play again. Now this is grayed out right now, so we have to continue recording before we can really use it properly. And so this actually typically works in the middle of a function and not in between functions. And that's why it's grayed out right here. So let's say that we're done with our recording. All we need to do now is just press on stop. So now we can give a name to our recording. So we're just gonna leave it with this default name. Uh, actually, we can rechange it to underscore tutorial so I can identify it a little easier. We can give it a description so we can say these are some tests. Let me get rid of that uppercase H. 
And then we can look down here and we have some options. We can actually restore pre playback view and we can basically do that when pausing for user input or once the playback finishes. So these are very interesting options that we can turn on or off right here. Aren't very crucial right now, so we don't have to worry about pre-playback view right now. Then this checkbox here says check for inconsistencies when playback begins. So if there are any issues, for example, if certain functions are missing from the program, let's say that AutoCAD has uh, some bugs in it, or maybe you installed it incorrectly, or you changed your installation or replaced it, the macro might not work if those functions are missing. And so if there are any inconsistencies, it's going to check for it during the playback of the macro. We also can see this arrow down here. So if you're missing the options that I have, just make sure to click on this drop down here. It is hiding some pretty useful functions down here, some options. So now we're going to click OK. And our macro is done. And now we have access to the play button and some of the other functions here. So here's our dropdown with all the other action macros. We can actually manage these by clicking on Manage Action Macros. And here we can select this and click on Modify. This is where we can go back to that same screen we were at. So if you ever need to change the description, the name, and other options down here, you can do so at any time. So we're just going to click on Cancel. We also have an Options button right here. So let's click on that. And here, this allows us to go back to our actual Options menu. You can find by clicking on the big red A button and then going to Options. And this takes us to the Action Recorder settings immediately. This is where you can change where all of your action recordings are going to be saved. So by default, it's saved deep within our computers in one of the folders in Autodesk's folder. So if that is too hard to memorize, which for me it definitely is because it's in one of the roaming folders, then I would prefer to save them in a special folder in Documents, for example. So I could always change that if I wanted to. Then we have this very fancy area here, Additional Actions Reading File Locations. So this is a very complex thing. It allows you to basically search for different file locations that could have additional actions that you can add to the recorder. I don't have any of them right now, so we're basically just going to not worry about it. So we'll just click Cancel here because we're not going to be changing that, and then we can click on Close. Now, the best part is to see the recorder in action. So let's get right to it. Now, if we try to play our action recording right now, nothing will really happen because we already have the options that we need. But let's try it anyway. So we're going to click on play. Then we get our little note. Please review step two. This is how those little messages and notes work. It's quite useful. Now we can click on close and the recording is done. Now let's check and see if we have duplicates of any objects. So. Let's take this object here. I've selected it. And look at this. There are two circles here. So it created objects on top of other objects. So that's why we want to be very careful when using this. We could make some duplicates without realizing. And so that's why the action recorder is very useful when using the audit and purge commands. Now, before we get into them, let me just show you guys how cool the action recorder is because I'll just delete my objects. And whenever I need to, I can just press play. And they're all back, and I get my note, of course. So this is really, really nice. Now, look at my cursor right now, because I skipped over it before. But look at this. It's actually saying specify a base point. That means that right after the action recorder is done, because I asked it to essentially specify a base point or insert a base point, it asks us when the action recording is done. So now I'm going to place it where I placed it earlier, right down here. And now it says that the action is complete. So that's how base points work with the action recorder. Now let's get rid of these assets and let's actually make a brand new recording. So we're going to click on record again. Now we have a brand new one and our cursor shows us that we are currently recording. Don't worry, we're not timed at all. It's just going to wait for us to do the next command. So let's do an audit first. And so here's how audits work. Now let's include the audit command in our new action macro. So we're just going to type in AUD. There is audit. We'll click on it. It's going to ask us if you want AutoCAD to automatically fix any errors that are detected. We're going to say yes. And that way, this audit can be quite useful in the future. So Y and enter. And there, the audit and the Y selection in the audit dialog is right there. Now, let's get into purge next. We're going to be combining audit and purge into one action macro, so to speak, or action recorder. 
And so let's do that now. Now, if I just type in purge like this, I can see that there's different kinds of purges. There's also one with a plus sign and a minus sign before it. So the plus sign one is quite interesting. The minus sign one is much more useful. And it will actually work with the action recorder much better than the regular purge. And that's because the minus purge function is actually what we call a command line function, and it is not a dialog. So certain dialogues, such as the regular purge command, will not necessarily work. So to actually just use the root command, we're just going to do minus purge. So we'll click on that. And now we have a huge drop down. We can see the same drop, uh, same options down here in our command line. So even though some of the drop down is currently hidden, we don't have to worry. We can just look down here. And so what we want to do is we want to see what kind of objects we're going to purge that are unused right now. And so we could just look and find individual objects or groups of objects in this list, or to keep it simple, we can just purge all. So we're going to click on all. And now it's going to ask us what names you want to use. And there's a star symbol that is ready right there. So we don't really have to type necessarily an object name. We can just press enter again. And now we have a new dialogue that appears here. So it's going to ask us a very important question. It says no value was recorded when you press the enter key. What do you want to do? And so we basically have these two options here. We can use the value that's set. That means that it will record the enter key, but not the current default value. Or use the current default value. The action recorder, the action macro, records the current default value. So we're just going to use the default value if we wanted to. But we could also just say, don't use the default value. Just record with the enter key. And I think this will be much more useful. So we're going to be using the first option here. So now it's asking us verify each name to be purged. This might take some time if we have too many assets. It is the safe thing to do. In this case, because I know that this drawing is relatively small and clean, I'm going to say no to it. So now I'm going to press Enter. And it is done. And so in the future, if I ever want to do this string of commands, we can basically call this a cleaning action macro, so to speak, because it audits and purges the entire document. Now all of those settings are here in our macro. And now we are done with this macro, so we're going to click on Stop. It's going to ask us to give it a name, so we'll call it Cleaning Action Macro. And we can give it a description, Audit plus the minus purge, <laughs> This is, which is a little bit confusing. So let's actually replace the plus with and minus purge. There we go. And so everything here is fine as it is, and then we'll click OK. Now. It looks like there are some invalid characters. We can't really use the plus sign or minus signs here. It looks like I don't see them on this list, but it's definitely one of them right here. Ah, yes, it's a dash, so to speak. So we're going to click on close, and we don't really need that. So we're just going to get rid of it and say out it and purge. We'll click OK. Now, it still says there are invalid characters. And that's because I believe that spaces, there it is, do not use spaces. So we can't use spaces here in the name of the macro. The description can actually have anything it wants. So I was making a bit of a mistake there. So we'll actually put that minus sign back there. So we'll call this cleaning underscore action underscore macro. This should work. There we go. So underscores are a great way to add artificial spaces in certain names that need to be one full word technically. <laughs> All right, and that's how we can use it. Let's try and test it right now. We're actually going to make sure that is selected. Yep, that is the one that is selected right here. So we'll just click on play. And there it is. The macro is complete. And if we look in our command line, we can actually click this arrow here to see anything that happened. It checked through all of the different purgeable objects, and it audited in the beginning as well. So we can basically prove that our action recorder worked quite effectively in this instance. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on the action recorder in AutoCAD. Once again, my name is Ari, and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.